Well, hello there, Pastor Jonathan here with Rock Creek Family Church, and I am excited to be sharing with you our fourth and final week of knowing your identity in Christ. And uh, we are just been, I mean, we're just rolling through this stuff. And that's been wonderful. This whole month of February, we've been talking about our identity in Christ, and uh, it's been great. It's been wonderful, and I'm glad that uh, you've been able to watch here online and to to see what we've been talking about at church. I want to just remind everybody that uh, we are meeting at the church. We are having services there, and we would love for you to come out. We would love for you to be a part of what's going on there. You know, uh, part of our purpose is to grow together and to learn together, and uh, we would love to have you come out and be with us. We have a great time. We play a couple of games. Uh, we get to eat. I mean, who doesn't love to eat? Um, so we would love to have you out there at, at any time, every Wednesday, 630. And um, I, I just didn't want, I don't want you to feel like because we're doing something online that you're not able to come out. No, we are meeting. We would love to have you there. I know it's been difficult with uh, things that are going on with the, with the pandemic. And then here recently, we've had a ton of ton of crazy weather and I wasn't even able to get out. I was uh, just locked up in the house all week. So I just want you to know that you are welcome and we would love to have you every Wednesday 630. Now that we are wrapping this series up for the month of March, we're going to start something new and it's going to be awesome and I can't wait to share that with you. I'll be uh, sharing something later on this week about that. Um, But let's dive into this. Let's dive into this fourth and final uh, week of the series of Knowing Our Identity in Christ. It's been awesome. It's been amazing, and I'm excited to get into it. So before we do, though, let's pray, and uh, let's let's get into this. I know it's going to be awesome, so let's go. Father God, we thank you, God. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to be here, to meet, and uh, to be online, God, and, and just pray, God, that you would speak to us, that you would teach us our purpose and uh, teach us uh, the identity that you have placed in us. God, we love you and we thank you. And I just ask that you would be with each and every one of us as we finish this series. It is in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. Let us get into this. This is going to be our fourth and final uh, week of knowing our identity in Christ. We have We've talked about uh, how God knows our heart. We've talked about uh, that God can see past the mess, past the stuff. God can see who we really are. And then we talked about some false identities that we have, some things that we maybe uh, take out of this world and we try to say that that is who we are. And we all have those false identities. We all take things and we identify ourselves with our certain positions, or maybe our appearance, or our wealth, uh, different skills that we have. We we do that, and uh, and then the third week we talked about our spiritual uh, spiritual perp- or, uh, position, spiritual appearance, spiritual wealth, uh, our spiritual identity, and we talked about what those mean and and what we what our real spiritual position is as opposed to the position that we have here and what we do here and this week today we are going to be talking about our purpose you know we've talked about who we are now it's time to talk about why we are um you can't have uh you can't have an identity without a purpose everything has a purpose with it and so that's what we're going to be talking about today. God knows who we are, and he also knows why we are. So if you've been following along the last several weeks, we've been in Psalm 139, and we're going to go back there again. And uh, We're going to read a little bit in Psalm 139. So if you would go to Psalm 139, verse 16, and we have read this section before, but we are going to read it again. This is uh, this is powerful. This is really powerful. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. There's another translation that reads it like this. It kind of like this. It says, you saw my body as it was formed. All the days planned for me were written in your book before I was one day old. 
and that's powerful. What this what the scripture is telling us is that God knew who we were, who we are, and who we're meant to be. Before we were even formed, before we were even created, God knew everything about us, and he knew the person that we were going to be. Uh, so, you know, that's that's pretty, that's pretty powerful. A lot of us try to figure that stuff out, try to figure out what our purpose is, and we're going to talk about what our purpose is. But the great thing is, is that God already has that part figured out. He's already got that part figured out. It happened before we were even formed, before we even created, before we even formed, before even one day crying and screaming in a little diaper, before any of that, God had that all planned out. So uh, what is that purpose? Well, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. One of the one of the most asked questions is, what is my purpose and why am I here? If you go to any bookstore or if you even go to Walmart, you're going to see books and magazines and articles and different things uh, that are like uh, 100 reasons why you're here or uh, the top 10 uh, purpose for your life or diff- different things like that. A lot of self-help books, a lot of things that try to help us figure out who we are and what our purpose is. And, you know, some of that's great. Some of that's wonderful to help maybe uh, try to, to get some some uh, growth in your life, and, and that's great, but it's never going to answer the real question of what your actual purpose is. And we can hunt, we can look, and, and humans have done this for hundreds, probably thousands, I don't know, thousands maybe, but at least hundreds of years trying to figure out what their purpose is, what is the point to all this, what is the meaning to all this. I, I remember when I was very little, um, I remember just one day it just, it kind of just hit me and I looked down and looking at my hands and I was like, what, what is the, what is my purpose here? And, um, we're going to get into that. Like I said, we're going to get into that. I actually have something here. Um, some of you probably know what this is. Uh, some of you may not know what this is. Um, it looks kind of like a pencil and, uh, you would be half right if you thought it was a pencil. Um, it's, uh, it's a very, very interesting tool. Um, but it could be used for a lot of things. I could use it to, uh, scratch my head. Actually, it doesn't do too bad with that. Um, or my beard, maybe, maybe, um, I could use it to pick my nose. I sure could, and I would, but I really like this, so I'm not going to do that. So um, maybe with this end, no. Um, but you could use this for a lot of different things. You really could. It is, um, I tell you, if, if you're not sure, if you don't know what it is, it is a, an Apple Pencil, and um, it has a ton of different uh, things that you can do with it. It's, uh, it has a, a lot of different uh, tools that it can be used with. But if we wanted to know what its real purpose is, what it what it's truly made for, uh, we would go to the ones who created it. We would go and ask Apple, hey, uh, what is this thing for? Um, you know, I could even figure out on my own maybe some of the things that I can use it for. It's, it's really made uh, to make things easier whenever I'm working on my iPad taking notes or working through different apps. But if I really wanted to know everything that it could do, I would go to the one who created it and I would say, hey, what is the point of all this? What is the purpose of this? Uh, What can I do with this? And they would be able to tell me more than I could ever imagine because I don't know what it's made of. I don't know uh, the inner workings of it. I don't know how it works. I don't know uh, everything that can be done with it. I can use it just to you know, tap a couple of things here and there, but really it has uh, so much more purpose behind it. And that is the same thing with you and me. Uh, We can try to figure out our purpose. We can try to figure out, you know, uh, what uh, our purpose is here. But in the end, we're not even really even going to scratch the surface unless we go to the one who created us. The one who created us is the one that's going to know what our true purpose is, what our 
our core purpose is behind everything that we are doing the the primary purpose for our life and we're going to read that we're going to I'm going to tell you that right here right now and uh, if you go to Romans chapter 11 verse 36 I'll give you just a second there but this is going to be uh this is going to be eye opening and uh there's going to be more that comes with that but here we go Romans chapter 11 verse 36 for everything comes from him Everything exists by His power, and everything is purposed for His glory. There it is, right there. Our primary purpose is to bring glory to God. And you may be hearing that, you may be thinking, oh, okay, like, well, maybe I could have guessed that, or maybe well, that that's that's it. No, that's huge. That's huge. That's huge. Let's read it again. That everything is purposed for his glory. Now, that can take up a di- bunch of different forms, a bunch of different different shapes. It can look different in each of our lives. But our primary, our shared purpose is that we are to bring glory to God. We are to bring glory to God. That's our primary purpose. Sorry. No, it just... Um, you know, and like I said, that can look different for each and every one of us, but that is our primary purpose. That is the, the reason why we are here. Now, God also has a plan for each and every one of us. Now, this is the part that's going to look a little different from person to person. The plan is what is going to be so different from each and every one of us. But let's read Jeremiah 29. Verse 11, and this might be one that you've heard before. This is a pretty popular scripture that I think a lot of us have heard. And if you haven't, man, this is a great one to know. So Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a future and hope. God has a plan for us, and it's a good plan. This plan is is different than our purpose. This plan is going to be a little different from each and every one of us. Now, our purpose, our primary purpose is the same for all of us, and that is to bring glory to God. That is our primary purpose. But our plan, the plan that God has for us is going to be different. Maybe God's plan for you is to be a missionary. Maybe God's plan for you is to be a doctor or a lawyer. Maybe his plan is uh, for you is to be a businessman, maybe, or businesswoman, or maybe it is to create the next huge company or huge nonprofit or whatever it is. I mean, the list could go on. Your plan can be completely different, but your purpose is the same. The purpose behind everything that you do is to bring glory to God. But God has a great plan for us. And the greatest thing about that is that he wants us to succeed. We all want to succeed. We all want to be uh, successful and do good. But there's no one that wants us to succeed more than God. He is standing next to us, rooting us on like, go, 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 keep going. Um, But it's when we start going in the wrong direction that he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, maybe come back this way a minute. Let's 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 redirect to have a plan. For you, and that's not my plan. This is my plan. So let's get you back on track here. Um, think about it like this: uh, For me, growing up, uh, Easter, I mean, it was it was wonderful. I love candy, and that's when I got a lot of candy. A few times throughout the year that you get tons of candy, and Easter was one of them. And there's a bit of a a competition, I felt like, if you will, where you had to go hunt the eggs. And find the the good stuff in the eggs and and growing up, uh, my parents, I mean the Easter Bunny would go out and hide these eggs out in the yard, and um, it would have to go hunt for them. And so once everybody was up, everybody was ready, we would go out there and we would hunt and we would try to find and we would we would search and we would go from here to here to here to here to place to place and try to look somewhere up high somewhere low somewhere really hidden somewhere just kind of like it's right there it's gotta be uh and so um after all of that 
at the end of hunting, after the end of getting all the eggs, we would go back inside, and inside would be the the biggest treasure of all of it, and it was a huge Easter basket, and it had tons of candy and stuff in it. It was it was amazing, and it was kind of like after all that work of, of hunting and searching, this is your your main prize. the 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 main the the main thing for this a day is this right here, this Easter basket, and it was amazing. Now there's uh, a bigger reason for Easter that we will talk about coming up and we will celebrate. Um, but growing up, to me, that was that was the main thing, the candy. I want the candy. I want the eggs. I want the, the chocolate bunny. I want the gummy bunnies. I want the, the jelly beans. I want I, you name it. If it was a candy other than Swedish fish, I wanted it, okay? So uh, this is... This is kind of how God operates. This is kind of how God works. He has a plan. He sets out all these things for us, these these different achievements, different things that he wants us to, to get to, different stages in life that he wants us to get to. And he kind of lets us go, and he's like, all right, here you go. And he, he tries to guide us and point us in the right direction. Okay, you, this is kind of where you're going to want to go search. This is kind of where I want you to work. And... He's not going to like halfway through it go, oh, you, you can't find them all? Huh? Oh, well. Oh, well. You can't, you can't find everything that I've placed for you? Oh, no, that's too bad. Because our parents wouldn't do that. If we were searching for the eggs, they wouldn't just up and leave and say, oh, that's too bad. No, they, they want you to find everything. They want you to, to get the best of the best. They want you to achieve everything that they've already planned out for you. And that is how God operates. He wants you to achieve every goal. He wants you to get everything there is to get out of life. And he's planned it all out. He's put everything out exactly where it's meant to be. And he wants us to succeed. And then even even greater than that, he has some great treasure in store for us at the end of all of that. At the very end of all that, he has something huge for us. And so when we're out there and we're going through life and we're we're struggling to to find uh, what the purpose is or we're trying, struggling to find that next thing that God has in store for us, um, don't give up. Don't give up because God's not giving up on you. He's right there with you. He's going to keep guiding you, keep pushing you, keep directing you into the the proper place that he wants you to go so that you can find what he has in store for you. I want to read this next scripture. It's uh, in Romans 11, verse 36. It says, For everything comes from him. Everything exists by his power, and everything is purposed for his glory. I think I went the wrong way in my scripture. But just a reminder, that is our primary purpose, is to bring glory to God. Bring glory to God. So even throughout all of the searching, through God's plan that he has for us, we're going to want to remember that our primary purpose is to bring glory to God through everything that we do. Like I said, God's not going to abandon us. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to let us fail. He wants us to succeed more than anything. Uh, God's plan is already laid out. And uh, he he wants us to to meet that plan and to follow through with it. All we really have to do is walk in it because it's already planned out. I mean, that's that that's probably one of the hardest parts uh, about uh, coming up with anything is is making the plan for it all. And God's already done that. We just have to walk it out, and that can be difficult. But uh, since there's already a plan out there for us, it can be a little easier to get through it. And we have a guide. God is our guide. God is, is going to guide us, and he's going to provide for us in every step of the way. All right. The scripture I, I did want to get to here is going to be in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. We've talked about our purpose. We've talked about our plan. And now we're going to talk about our potential um, because we have our purpose and that's to bring glory to God. And we know that God has a plan for us and that can look different from each and every one of us. But God also has something else. God sees something else and that is our 
potential. God sees the potential behind everything. We 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 put like all this stuff in our life. We put all these things. We we get ourselves busy. We we kind of we kind of just load ourselves up with all these things that we want to do and want to be and all that. But God sees something greater within us past all that stuff, and it is a great potential to be and to do greater than we could ever imagine. You know, uh, there's a lot of people that say that this generation of kids, you guys, uh, y'all just y'all are lazy or y'all don't do a lot or or you guys aren't gonna be able to to do and to be and. And it's really kind of sad to hear people say that, but I see a generation of kids, I see you guys, y'all y'all probably have the greatest potential than any generation before you. You guys have got some great potential to go and to do and to be, and uh, man, it's powerful, it's so powerful, and God sees that. God has put that in you, and he sees that you're going to be capable of doing greater things than you and I could ever imagine. And so in order for us to reach that potential, we need something, and that is the strength of the Spirit. And that's what we're going to read in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. It is not by might, it is not by strength, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. It is by God's Spirit that we will meet the potential that He has instilled in us. Um, Think about it like this. Let's say you have a sailboat. Okay, but you don't have your sail up. You're just kind of going along in your boat and you're paddling with your arms, which would be crazy in and of itself to be able to do that. But let's say you're paddling with your arms, you're trying to get through the water, get through the waves, um, and you might be able to make some distance on your own like that, but you're going to get tired very quickly. I mean, very quickly. Um, the waves are probably going to push you back. So any distance that you made is going to just go right back. You're going to, you're going to lose that distance, lose that progress. Um, and the, the waves and the currents are going to push and pull you all around in different directions. It's going to be a mess. But if you put your sail out and you allow the wind to come in and to push it, It's going to guide you and it's going to put you in places that you weren't able to get to on your own. And that is exactly uh, what the Holy Spirit is going to do in your life. And we, we in church, we touch on the Holy Spirit, we talk about the Spirit, and we're going to get more into that uh, at a later date. But right now, it's important that we understand that we can do all these things that we we want to we want to do we can try we can try our best but in order to meet the fullest potential that God has instilled in us we're going to need the help of the holy spirit and that's what this scripture says i want to read it one more time zechariah 4 verse 6 it is not by might not by strength it doesn't matter if you're paddling with your arms you're not going to get there it is by my spirit says the lord he wants to fill your sail with his spirit and he wants to move you and guide you and direct you in places that you could not go on your own that's another great win for us that that, mean that tells us that it doesn't matter how strong or weak we are we don't have to do it on our own we don't have to try to get through this plan that god has for us all on our own he's going to guide us and he's going to provide us with help and that's going to be with the holy spirit so If you want to live your identity to the fullest, you're going to need the help of the Spirit. We're going to need God's Spirit. There are uh, different gifts of the Spirit, different things. Like I said, we're going to get into that at a later date. I I want us to dive deep into that. But right now, I just want you to understand that, you know, we have a purpose. That's to bring glory to God. That's everybody's purpose. But then we each have our own plan that God has placed God has made for us, and that plan is great, and God wants us to succeed, but we can't succeed without His Spirit. We can't can't succeed to the full potential that God has for us without His Spirit guiding us and directing us, just like a sailboat. So, um, 
like I, like I said, we've talked all month about our identity. We've talked about these different things and, and how we how God sees us, how we see ourselves, different things that we place our identity in and what we really should place our identity in. And now we're, we've finished up here with uh, our purpose because we can know who we are. But if we don't know why we are here and what our purpose is, then we can't go anywhere. And God wants you to know that it doesn't matter what life throws at you. It doesn't matter what's going to happen in your life. That God has already planned it all out. He knows what's going to happen. But he wants you to succeed in that. He wants you to succeed in your life. And uh, we can do that by leaning on him, by leaning on his spirit, by calling on him and asking him to guide us and direct us. And if we do that, if we live our life knowing that what our purpose is, knowing that our core purpose is to bring him glory. And if we live our life knowing that the plan has already been made and, and that we just have to walk in it. And if we live our life and we go through this plan and, and we understand this purpose with the Holy Spirit, then we're going to succeed. It's going to be hard at times. It's going to be difficult. I'm never going to tell you that it's not going to be because it is difficult. But God wants us to succeed, and he wants you to be as successful as you want to be, and even more than that. And so uh, I hope that this, I hope this lesson has, has taught you that it's not up to you. It's not up to you. It's not up to you. Let me say it again. It is not up to you to figure it all out, to do all the work, to do all the planning. It's not up to you. So let's lean on God. Let's trust on God to get us through the plan that he has for us. And that's another thing. It's, it's his plan. It's his plan. It's his plan. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. And it's going to be better than you could ever imagine. Let's pray and let's close this wonderful series up in prayer and giving thanks to God. Father God, we we come before you at the end of this series, God, and I would just thank you. God, and I pray, I pray, God, that you would pour into us, God, your spirit. God, that we would begin to go through our days understanding that our purpose is to bring you glory. That is our core purpose. And God, I pray that as we go through our days that you would begin to reveal to us more and more each and every day the plan that you have for us. And God, guide us and direct us with your spirit guide and direct us into the little treasures that you have for us, God. And God, help us to meet the fullest potential that you see in us. Not what we see, but what you see, what you have instilled in us. God, help us to meet that fullest potential. God, we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Again, I want to remind you, you are welcome to come out to the church. We would love to have you. We can't wait to meet with you and to see you. And I'm also uh, going to be putting something out later this week or early next week about our next series, what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be talking about in the month of March. Um, and I mean, I talked about Easter. It's coming up too. So I hope you're ready. I hope you are prepared. And uh, I can't wait to see you. I can't wait. Uh, to meet you even on here again next week. It's going to be amazing. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you have a wonderful time. And don't forget that uh, your purpose, your, your, why you are here is to bring glory to God. And he wants to see you succeed greater than you want to see yourself succeed. Have a wonderful day and God bless.